Uh, I have uh, worked mainly on the application side, um, Java, you know, some MySQL, uh, really more on the NoSQL side. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty familiar with distributed systems and scale out. Um, and with that, let me introduce Jacob. Uh, my name is Jacob Walsick. I am a solution architect in the Rackspace Private Cloud Group. My background is all in infrastructure. I've worked for some of the largest universities in the world. I've done high scale web commerce, um, a lot of kind of media facing sort of applications. So I have a lot of experience building, designing infrastructure. And we're here today to talk about both what HA is, as well as talk about a few different options for making MySQL highly available within the context of your OpenStack environment. And one of the things to keep in mind about HA is that it's not just as simple as running two. You know, it's a matter of having some way to ensure that your application stays available at all of the various layers. When we look at this chart over here that talks about HA S9s, which is how we typically see it represented either in SLAs or various vendors talking about how their product is going to make your life easier. You know, the further down that stack you get, as you go from days to hours to minutes to seconds of downtime over the course of the year, generally the more complex your solution is going to be and frequently also the more expensive it gets. The way that we implement HA is we eliminate single points of failure from the environment. So, you know, at its most basic level, it is simply running two or more of something. But there's a lot more to it than that when we start dealing with services such as MySQL. We need to have our clients able to talk to a single source, or they need to be aware of the fact that they have to talk to multiple sources. Behind whatever that VIP might be, we need some way of distributing our workload, simply some sort of you know, load balancer. And then for data that's, or free applications that are gonna have stateful services, we need to have some way to make sure that our data is getting replicated between those instances of that application. Or that they have some single source that they can share that has that data. When we talk about stateful versus stateless, if we look at the API services that are part of any of the OpenStack programs, we're looking at a stateless service. It's HTTP, it's a web server. It's very, very basic. We can run a lot of them. We know, how to, we know how to scale them. We know how to distribute that workload. Stateful services can be a bit different. They're all a little bit you know, specific in how you implement failover because you have to make sure that they have access to whatever the data is, that, that state information. We also want to talk about what mode are we going to use for our failover. With a lot of like networking devices, for instance, you, know, you might have two firewalls that are set up as an active-passive pair. There's some sort of heartbeat connection between the two of them, and if one of those physical devices dies, the other one takes over. Very common solution to use with our you know, single-corded net devices. For services that are, you know, we can run in an active-active setup, that means that we have more than one of them. We have some sort of mechanism to distribute load between them. Uh, you know, the different methods that we're gonna talk about for MySQL today are gonna be a blend of these two different options. The first solution that we're gonna talk about is the one that is outlined in the OpenStack community guide for uh, implementing highly available MySQL. It's also the one that Rackspace uses on our public cloud platform. It's to use my, the uh, whatever, CoreSync, Pacemaker, and DRBD. The, the first component we want to talk about here is DRBD itself. Of the three options that we're going to talk about today, what makes this one unique is that the data replication is all happening outside of MySQL. When you're using this setup, MySQL has no idea that its underlying data is being replicated. When we're talking about the common use case for DRBD, and there are options to do this differently, but we're gonna talk about the most, you know, most well-known, most well-used, is a active-passive setup. You're going to have two nodes, you're going to have block replication happening between them, but you're only gonna be reading data off of one of them. That means that this option is going to have some limitations. 
with some of these solutions where we're doing our replication within MySQL itself, you can do things like run backups off of a passive node. In this setup, you're gonna be doing all of your active queries against one node, and you're gonna be taking all of your backups off of that same machine. When we expand this out, we have a few different components that are gonna work together to make MySQL fail over for us. We have CoreSync, which is providing the cluster management engine. It's letting us set up our heartbeat. So it lets two machines know that, yes, I'm still here. Or it notices that that second node has gone away. Pacemaker is used to actually facilitate doing things like starting MySQL on the passive node in the event that the active node dies. DRBD is what's keeping our data in sync. Again, very important to keep in mind that MySQL has no idea that its data is being replicated. So you do need to have some way of telling MySQL on one node to stop doing work before it starts doing work on the other. This is a tried and true solution for implementing highly available MySQL, but it does come with a rather ugly limitation of, you know, you're, you're on two hosts. If you need to do a scale out solution, this is not gonna be the best option to go with for a highly available setup. However, if you're just talking about building a cloud that is some hundreds of nodes, those two MySQL servers are gonna serve you quite well for a long period of time. All right. So um, we, um, you know, totally have about three solutions that we're gonna discuss, but obviously these are not, uh, you know, the be all and the end all. There are obviously a lot more solutions than these. Um, what I'm gonna focus on is, uh, you know, keep a HA proxy, keep ID, VRRP, and then um, the next um, is Galera. Uh, hopefully, if, you know, everything works well, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Uh, you know, we'll do a demo on uh, HA proxy, keep ID, and VRRP, and then I'll kind of talk about some of the steps that you would uh, have to do to, uh, you know, to use uh, Galera replication. Um, you know, Jacob talked about the fact that you need replication services. Uh, you know, you need some kind of a heartbeat mechanism, right? Uh, and and uh, really, if you break it down to those, um, you know, if you don't want these schemes, you can go ahead and implement something else as well. Uh, you know, just keeping in mind that, you know, you need some of those components uh, to make HA uh, possible, okay? So just so that I get an idea, how many of you are experts on HA proxy, keep alive D and VRRP uh, experts? Okay, so I gotta watch out for two of you guys, but other than that, I can say anything, right? Um, so what, what I'll do is, uh, you know, um, walk through really quickly, and like I said before, you know, pretty straightforward to implement this. Um, you know, what I say is, uh, you know, if I can do it, you know, pretty much anybody in the room can do it. Um, so Keep Alive D is, uh, you know, based on the uh, Linux uh, virtual server, um, and, and uh, the uh, um, actual protocol that's implementing the failover uh, you know, is based on VRRP. So kind of keep alive D and VRRP work hand in hand. And the idea is that it uses something called as a virtual IP, okay? Uh, and this is a, a layer three IP. Uh, um, and, and essentially what it does is, uh, you know, if this particular node goes down, that IP automatically kind of moves to the other node, you know, to the node that is alive and well, okay? And when it comes back up again, you know, if there is a failover, um, you know, if there is a failback, then it goes back to that node. Uh, but otherwise, you know, it, it's, it's still pointing to the original node, and only if the original node dies, then again, it's gonna float to the other one, okay? Or it's gonna um, go to the other node, okay? As you can see here, basically what I've set up is, I've set up um, a controller one and controller two, okay? And uh, all these demos are gonna be based on the Rackspace private cloud. Um, you know, which provides some very easy chef recipes, you know, to make this happen. In fact, all that you need to do is provide two roles, uh, you know, HA controller one, HA controller two, okay, and, and it'll inject all the appropriate scripts, you know, with keep alive D, with VRRP, with, you know, MySQL and so on, uh, you know, to make it happen. So really, you know, if you install it, you really don't have to do anything, um, you know, after that point, okay? So what I did was I set up two controllers, Controller one is using, uh, you know, an IP address of 192.168.246.11. You know, I did it all on Vagrant on uh, VirtualBox on my laptop, okay? 
So you can, you can try it out yourself as soon as you go back. Okay, um, controller two is uh, on 12, okay? Um, I could make a direct call to either 11 or 12, um, you know, for MySQL, but you know, that's, that's something that you know, is not recommended, right? So you, what it does is it uses master-master replication. So you know, as long as 11 and 12 are both alive, you're fine, right? But the moment you know, you're using only 11, okay, and if that particular node goes down, uh, now you're in trouble, right? Because um, you know, even though 12 is alive and is able to you know, do whatever it is that you want to do, uh, you cannot access that, right? So, so typically what you do is you use the VIP you know, in this particular case, it's 192, 168, 236, and 198, okay? So I'm using this for MySQL. Uh, I use 197 for the API services. The API services, as Jacob pointed out, is stateless, and really what it does is it, it's proxied, so, you know, it can really go to any node. Um, whereas SQ, MySQL is really more in an active-passive mode, okay? So it's, it's basically going to, um, you know, one of the nodes. Um, so essentially what happens is, um, you know, if one of, the, one of the nodes goes down, the other one becomes the master and so on, okay? Yeah. Uh, HA proxy is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really not going to spend too much time on it, uh, but basically it's a software load balancer. Uh, and like I said, you know, if you're using API services uh, which are stateless, it doesn't really matter which node it goes to. Uh, you can, you can uh, kind of effectively make use of the two controller nodes. Um, this kind of puts everything in, 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 one, uh, you know, in uh, one slide. Essentially, you have an application, right? And, and again, the beauty of this is, even though we are using this for MySQL, you can do this for any application that you want, okay? So if you're doing your own application, essentially what you have to do is you have to provide the replication service, services, you have to provide the heartbeat services, right? Um, or you can just leverage you know, what's available, right? You can use KeepAliveD. You can use VRRP, right? Uh, the replication might be a little bit different, right, depending on what kind of database you're using. You know, if you're not using MySQL, you may have to use something else. Um, so, um, you know, I have active passive infrastructure service on controller one, which is MySQL and Rabbit. Uh, and controller two is using really more of an active passive mode, okay? Um, and, and API services are always active active because it really doesn't matter. Uh, you know, it can go to any of the, uh, you know, the different nodes. Okay. Um, so this kind of illustrates what happens when, when a particular node goes down, right? So effectively what is happening is that, you know, the VIP is no longer pointing to controller one, it's gonna be pointing to controller two, okay? And really, from an application perspective, or somebody who's using uh, OpenStack, uh, you know, you don't even feel, you know, you, you don't, don't even know what's happening, right? It's just a speed bump, uh, you know, it's, there may be a, a little bit of a pause uh, when the VIP is transferring over from one to another, and then you're ready to go, okay? All right. So what I should do at this point is probably, you know, change pace a little bit and kind of do the demo. Um, so can we switch to the demo laptop and see if I can get this going? Thank you. All right. Just one second. Okay, so those are really, really small. I don't really care about too many of those windows. I just care about this. Can you guys see that? Okay. And let me go with this one too. Okay, that's good. Um, and maybe use another one. Okay, so this is the um, controller one, okay? And what I'll do here is uh, I'll just list all the services. Okay, so as you can see here, um, you know, there are a bunch of services, L1, L1, uh, L1 is, you know, running on L1, and uh, a bunch of services which are down. You know, basically L2 is all down, okay? Everybody see that? Okay. Uh, so what I'll do at this point is I will bring up um, L2, okay? So let me see, yeah. So let me bring, bring up L2. 
Oh, I like that. Nice. Thank you. <laughs> okay, so while it's booting, I will show what is happening with the VIPs. Okay, so essentially you can see here, um, can everybody see this? 192, 236, 198. Okay, so what is happening is 198 is assigned you know, to the controller um, L1. Is everybody with me, kind of, more or less, or, or you, know? you know? Pretty straightforward, right, at this point. So what I'll do is at this, uh, you know, let's see if L1 is up. I mean, L2 is up. Okay, so everything is up right now, right? So what I'll do is I'll shut down L, L2, I mean, sorry, shut down L1, and, and see if the whips move over to L2, okay? So as simple as this. Um, so I'll go back to, and I will halt L1, you know? It's probably the easiest thing to do. Okay, so okay, that's good. It's shutting down. Okay, so now what I'll do is I'll um, go into L2. And, uh, and see what happens here. First thing I may want to check is I see that the VIPs have basically transferred over from, from L1 to L2, okay? So effectively, you know, if I do my commands, you know, which are using, um, oh, I should do that, right? Then, you know, basically, uh, it's, it's as if nothing has happened because the VIP uh, kind of takes care. Um, what am I trying to say? Okay. Does that, does that make sense? Um, you know, how the whips transferred over, you know, I can, I can go ad nauseum, you know, shut this down and we'll see that, you know, things go back to L1 and all that, but, but, but hopefully you got the point, right? Uh, and I can, I, I can also go into a demo where I can show, you know, using a application program, uh, you know, if I use the, uh, the uh, address of the server, you know, instead of using the whip, um, then essentially when the server goes down, you know, my application is also host, right? So it's not available anymore because I'm not using the whip anymore, uh, or, or if it's not using the whip. So if I want to use the whip, then I'm all set. You know, I'm, I'm, uh, I have no problem. You know, the whips automatically take care of um, making MySQL highly available. Okay. So if you don't mind, can we move back to the presentation laptop? Thank you. Perfect. Okay. So the next thing that we're going to talk uh, in, in this particular presentation is uh, Galera, which is uh, the multi-master uh, replication for uh, MySQL and InnoDB, and uses a, uses a technique uh, called uh, WSREP. Um, you know, it uh, stands for Write Set Replication, and essentially what it does is it uses uh, a write set, and, and in, in effect, it turns your cluster into one multiple master. So, so in effect, you know, you, you don't even see that as a cluster. You, you, you just write to any of the nodes, um, and, and, you know, it opt automatically gets replicated to multiple nodes, to all the other nodes partic participating in the cluster. Does that make sense? Um, it's basically a, tech, uh, um, you know, a technique that's used in conjunction with Galera, the right set replication, uh, and you can use it for active, active, right? Really, it doesn't matter where you're doing the reads. It doesn't really matter where you're doing the writes. Uh, you know, you can, you can read to any, you can write to any. Uh, obviously, you know, we all know that, you know, it, it doesn't come for free. There is, there is one issue here, which is if you're writing to the same row from multiple masters, right, um, you know, then you have a problem, right? You know, so what, what typically Galera does is, you know, it, it issues... A, a, an error, okay? Basically, it, it, it errors out with a deadlock error, and we'll talk about that in, the, uh, in a moment, but, but uh, it, what Galera allows you to do is not only multi-master, it does true replication at row level, okay, and, and, and no slave lag or integrity issues, okay? And for some of you who know about the split brain, um, you know, possibility, 
you can eliminate the split brain possibility by having at least three nodes. Okay, so if you have three nodes, and actually you can work with two nodes and an arbitrator, but, but you know, in my example, what I did was I used three nodes, and effectively, instead of using, uh, you know, instead of pointing the, VI, uh, the VIP to the controller nodes, what I did was I point the VIP, you know, to the uh, uh, Galera nodes using HA proxy, and, and we'll see that um, in a second, okay? Uh, it's based on optimistic con concurrency control. Uh, the idea behind optimistic con concurrency control is, you know, let it happen, let's deal with it, okay? Rather than trying to lock a row and, 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 and uh, you know, have performance issues, it's like, you know, let's, le you know, let's see what happens, and then we'll deal with it, right? So if two uh, transactions are modifying the same row, then obviously one of them will have to win, right? The other one will get a deadlock error. Okay. Um, now the problem here is that you know it's really not the application program that's going to get the deadlock error, right? It's really the OpenStack infrastructure that's going to get the deadlock error. Okay. So I tried different combinations of different things to see if this happens. Uh, you know, obviously I didn't, you know, I didn't kind of load it or you know super load it or whatever, right? And and I really don't know you know all the intricacies of the internals or uh, whatever to figure out what workload might might cause that. Uh, you know, deadlock error, but, but, you know, that's something that to be, um, um, you know, to keep in mind, okay, because it's not something that you can work around in your application program, it's something that the OpenStack infrastructure has to do, and I'm not quite sure what happens in that case, uh, but that's something that, you know, uh, I'm sure, you know, some of you might, in the audience might have already seen it or may be able to answer it. Uh, so the application needs to handle the error, um, and like I said, it looks like a multi-master cluster with one big database and multiple entry points. So it doesn't matter what node you write to, it doesn't matter what node you read from, okay? Yeah. How do I deal with multi-master conflicts? Basically, one of them is gonna get a deadlock error. So either you need to retry the transaction or you need to abort the transaction, you know, it's really up to the application. And like I said before, you know, this happens at the OpenStack infrastructure level. Um, and again, you know, not quite sure which workloads it might happen. That's something that, you know, you need to keep in your back of your mind. Okay, but to be able to install, um, you know, Galera with OpenStack, you know, pretty straightforward. Okay, and and uh, this is a uh, diagram I basically stole from the several nine slide, uh, I mean several nine uh, site, and essentially it talks about how you know you can you can use an existing OpenStack infrastructure and 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 uh, add Galera to it. Okay, and I went about kind of doing this for the Rackspace private cloud, okay, and what I'll do is, uh, you know, I will outline some of the steps with the caveat that this is, you know, completely unsupported, okay, the support guys are going to kill me if I, you know, if I recommend this to anybody, okay, uh, because all that I've done is very simple testing, okay, uh, but essentially how I did this was I installed Rack, uh, the private cloud on two controllers with HM mode, and, you, you know, if you don't want to install Rackspace private cloud, you want to do something else, you know, this, the, uh, um, the steps are pretty similar, okay? So you have two controllers in HA mode, okay? So HA proxy, keep alive D, and VRRP is already installed by the recipes, right? The cookbooks and the recipes, you know, kind of take care of all of that for you. You don't have to do anything, right? You know, the VIPs, everything is set up. All that you need to do is set up the, you know, environment file appropriately. The environment file will have to have the virtual IDs um, you know, uh, for MySQL, for uh, the APIs, and for Rabbit, okay, and then you're all set. Um, install Galera on three separate nodes, okay? So if you go to the several nines site, okay, uh, several nines.com, and I have a, um, you know, a pointer to them uh, later in the talk, okay? So basically, if you get there, uh, they have a configurator, you know, which essentially, um, you know, allows you to very easily install Galera with WS Rep on three nodes, okay? Um, you know, if you want more nodes, I'm not quite sure. You know, that configurator doesn't quite work, but, but I'm sure you can, you can work that out, okay? Uh, then what I did was I took the MySQL data from um, the existing controllers, right? What uh, the Rackspace Private Cloud does is it take, you know, the MySQL um, database is installed on the controller one and controller two, you know, with master-master replication, uh, effectively, right? So what I did was I took the um, data from, uh, um, you know, from the controller nodes, okay? 
and essentially you know, dumped it into the Galera. Okay, does that make sense? So basically, I kept it in sinks, right? Uh, in fact, I, I tried it out with, you know, after starting some, uh, some instances and all that, and, and everything seemed to you know, more or less work fine. Okay? Um, then what you want to do is you want to grant privileges to OpenStack. Okay? Uh, so there are a bunch of privileges that need to be granted. Okay? So if you go into, you know, I have a blog that outlines you know, how you want to grant those privileges. And once those privileges are granted, you know, with the appropriate password and all that, uh, then you're, you know, essentially ready to receive uh, OpenStack uh, requests. Okay. So then, what I do is I update Keepal ID and HA proxy on the controller nodes. Okay. So what happens in the controller nodes for uh, for Keepal ID, um, you know, for MySQL is it checks for the MySQL daemon, uh, daemon running, right? And, and, you know, if the daemon is down, then it's going to, you know, start it back again. Um, so essentially what I do is, you know, I have to change some of that um, to, to be able to HA proxy to the Galera nodes. So instead of, you know, instead of trying to uh, check for MySQL daemon running on my controller node, what I'm, what I'm now doing is I'm pointing to the, diff, you know, to the three Galera nodes. That makes sense? Okay, pretty straightforward, right? Um, and then what I do is... I essentially stop and uninstall all the MySQL services on the controller nodes because, you know, we don't want to use the controller nodes anymore. We want to use the, you know, the Galera cluster. Does that make sense? Okay. So, you know, um, it's pretty straightforward to do that. Um, and, and uh, you know, I have a blog, and I'll talk about, uh, you know, where the blog is, uh, you know, um, at the end of the talk. So, so this is kind of how we went to Galera, and again, um, uh, the, the idea behind Galera is that, you know, you can scale out and also make it highly available, you know, which is kind of a cool thing. Um, you, you really can't quite do that with, with just the master-master replication. Yeah. All right. So in summary, we've looked at three different options today for making MySQL itself highly available within a, you know, the, the infrastructure services for your OpenStack cloud. The first two that we looked at, uh, Pacemaker and uh, for Pacemaker, CoreSync, DRBD, and the Keep Alive HA Proxy VRRP setup are two very well tested, well known, uh, very stable entities that are commonly used today. Uh, options like the you know, Glera, Percona, a few others for doing massive scale out versus just high availability, making sure that my service stays running are much newer to the market, and people are using them in, you know, with mixed success in different types of environments. We also didn't touch on the idea of using any other databases with, uh, you know, with your OpenStack environment. One of the things that we'll probably all start to see as we all start relying on Solometer very heavily is that maybe we don't want to put everything in MySQL. Maybe we end up with multiple data stores that are providing backend services with a place to keep their data. So here are the resources that we used to kind of gather some of the information where we stole some of our images for these slides. Um, this deck will get uploaded to the conference slide share after this presentation. So if you want to be able to pull this down and follow all these links, that will be available for you. Uh, we also wanted to plug the book that a couple of our Rackspace friends just finished. Uh, They've been giving it away all week this week. As you guys noticed, there's no more expo floor out there today. So I do not believe they will be out there giving copies this afternoon. Uh, hopefully you guys were able to, uh, to grab a copy of that earlier this week. Okay, um, so in summary, um, you know, there are really a bunch of different options for implementing uh, MySQL. Uh, I think, I think, um, what I like to do is, you know, keep it as simple as possible. I think uh, uh, Keepal ID, HA proxy, and VRRP is going to be applicable for 80 to 90 percent of the installs. Um, but but where you probably need scale out, where you need, uh, may need more than two controller nodes, um, you know, and and surely there are a lot of edge cases out there. Uh, you know, then 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 there are definitely different options. Um, you know, the beauty of OpenStack is that you know nothing was invented, and that's a good, good thing, I think. You know, everything is based on, uh, you know, existing infrastructure that's been uh, pretty well tested. Uh, you know, CoreSync, uh, Pacemaker, and DRBD is recommended uh, by Oracle. You know, 
it, it's been around for a long time. Uh, and again, Keep Alive DHA proxy and VRRP has been around in the install uh, in the Linux world, uh, you know, for quite quite a long time as well. Uh, but but Galera is definitely gaining a lot of popularity. Um, you know, how many of you attended Florian's talk? You know, it was pretty cool. Florian has, yeah. So you know, he talked about Galera as well. So I think I think uh, there is going to be a lot more happening probably you know next year when we'll uh, come back uh, in Paris, I guess. Um, but um, but again, you know, if if you can start with 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 a very simple install and 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 keep it simple. Um, you know, I think that's the best way to go. Um, with Rackspace Private Cloud, um, you know, uh, the, the cookbooks and the recipes are pre-installed and ready to go, right? Uh, so very easy to use, uh, you know, the existing HA infrastructure. But if you don't like that, you know, you can slide something underneath as well. Uh, I did the Galera one, but, you know, you can, you can as well do Percona or, uh, or, you know, anything else. My SkySQL, you know, there are, there are a bunch of different options out there, okay? Um, the OpenStack HA guide, you know, that's again, um, I think Florian was uh, instrumental for that. You know, is a great guide. Um, you know, if, if you don't know anything about HA, which was what I was, uh, you know, a few months back, uh, I think I think it's a great place to start. Um, and and uh, you know, I'm a mechanical engineer. Uh, you know, that's my undergrad, and I like to see things move. So the best way to to actually Kind of make, you know get your hands dirty, kind of play around with this. Uh, you know, it's just install the Rackspace Private Cloud and and install it in HA option. You know, and kind of play around with it. Um, you know, there are a couple of blogs. You know, that was on the resources. Uh, you know, which talks about how we can do that. Uh, and and uh, you know, how many of you use Vagrant? Uh, few. Okay. If you haven't used Vagrant, you know, it's it's really really easy. You know, to do something like this. You know, of course, just before the uh, you know the talk. I had some issues with Vagrant, but, but that's a different story. Um, it's really, really easy to set up VMs and kind of play around with it, OK? Uh, with that said, Jacob, anything else? Uh, no, I think we have time for a question or two, if you guys have questions. Yeah, yeah we have uh, time for definitely a few Here questions. In the front. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so the question, if I can understand, is that uh, you know the Python application or the Python library, right? Yeah. Uh, when they are using Galera, will it will it recover uh, a deadlock error, right? Or can it handle the deadlock error? And I don't know if anybody else, you know, I'm not a Python guy. Uh, Does this gentleman yes. know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, anyway. Right, yeah. so just on normal NODD on a single node, you're going to get rollbacks to the same rights. Right, it's just that uh, all code that's handled, unless you're using SQL Live, you only have one concurrent object, <laughs> <laughs> then you're fine. Yeah. The problem is that doesn't scale too well. But yes, you're going to have to handle the errors anyway, so anything that is actually a bug on that is, in fact, an open stack bug, uh, and that can be fixed. It's just how defensive you want to be about never hitting those bugs. And so that's why some people do uh, treat the active active cluster as active. So to avoid those kind of yeah that that's a, that's a great point yeah so I completely agree that the app it's really at the application level how do you handle it but I thought your question was does it handle the deadlock error you know at least you know uh, okay, flag I, it back to the application. Yeah. I know it was, I wasn't that worried by open stack for other applications that okay. Fine. Okay. Any other questions, comments? Uh, 
Um, like I said, you know, I haven't done any of the testing, so uh, you know, I think I think a point there, you know, that was made was, you know, if you want to be conservative, the the better way of doing this would be just go active passive, right? That way you don't have to deal with the deadlock errors at all, right? Um, that, that's that's in the uh, well, the other solution we talked about using keep alive DHA keep alive proxy. Yeah. That's why HA proxy is there so that writes are only ever being directed to one host at a time. Um, obviously, that is where we get some of the limitations on scalability. But I, I, I don't think we, uh, between Rags and I, we definitely don't know the answer today as to yes. how, uh, you know, how some OpenStack program using a SQL Alchemy connection is going to respond there. Exactly, and and it really depends on the workload for sure. You know, um, so I'm I'm not aware of that. But uh, again, you know, if somebody wants to comment on that, you know, feel free to. Except the guy with the blue yeah. shirt. Yeah. <laughs> Sure, yeah, that's... It's one of those areas where engineers are like working with throughput, and it's one of those things where it's being discussed with a bunch of engineers and how you can actually simulate that in a dev environment as well, because the last thing you want is everyone in production noticing it, and no one in development. Uh, absolutely. Yeah, and it's that for, there's one side for development theory, the other side for actual policy and practice. Do you have, now you know that a cluster uh, has a 1,300 Okay. And we have no more than 20 deadlocks. Okay. Uh, I mean, the, the, the use case for MySQL within OpenStack is such that it's, it's not like an e-commerce site on Black Friday. You know, it's, it's a very, very different kind of scenario in terms of the, the chances where there might be a, a deadlock scenario. So that makes sense. No, but, but, but it's really heartening to know that, you know, you use uh, a nine-node Galera cluster with a three master, you said, or? They're all masters. Okay, all masters. okay, okay. I'll... No, I mean, I'm talking of controllers. Uh, so all, all nine are masters, and Galera is installed on nine of them, too? Yeah. Okay, got it, got it. Okay. And there are not many deadlock errors, which is, which is cool, right? Any other questions? Any other non-Galera questions? <laughs> No? All right, thank you very much. Thanks for coming. Enjoy.